An Eton boy had a week's holiday, and he came up to town and stayed with his people, who had a house party on. And one night, they all went to the theatre. They took about 20 stalls. And when they arrived at the theatre, they found that one stall was in the row in front of them. So they gave it to the boy, and he had a vacant stall on either side of him. Well, these two vacant stalls were taken by two ladies who arrived. And these two ladies didn't wish to be separated. So one of them bent down to the boy and said, Oh, excuse me, but are you alone? So the boy said, I say, do be careful. He said, my people in the row at the back. An Australian came over to London for a holiday, and he was taken by a friend to one of the West End clubs. And he's introduced to many people, amongst whom was an old Scotchman. And this old Scotchman worried the Australian with hundreds and hundreds of questions about Australia. And he finished up by saying, Hey, you many Scotties over yonder? So the Australian said, no, no. He said, well, we have a few, but our principal pets are rabbits. There's a certain girl went in for one of these big lotteries, and she made a great point of getting ticket number 51, which, by the way, turned out to be the winning number, and she won about £30,000. Well, a reporter went down to interview her about this. And he asked her, he said, will you tell me why you especially wanted ticket number 51? So she said, well, sir, you see, it was like this, sir. You see, for seven nights, I dreamt of number seven. And seven sevens of 51, so I bought the ticket. There was an elderly lady who, I regret to say, got very intoxicated one night and was taken to the police station. So the next morning, she was brought before the magistrate who was a very terse sort of man. And he said to her, he said, name? So she said, Angel. He said, address? She said, having. Oh, he said, how did you get here? She said, on a rainbow, dearie. So he said, right, six weeks for sky laughing. A mother had put her little boy to bed, and she was sitting downstairs sewing. And suddenly she heard a little voice from the top of the stairs say, Mummy, Mummy, bring us up a glass of water, will you? I'm so thirsty. So the mother came out and said, You're not thirsty. You had some water before you went to bed. Now go to bed again at once. Well, a few minutes elapsed, and once more the little voice from the top of the stairs, Mummy, Mummy, bring us up a glass of water, will you? I'm so thirsty. So the mother came out and said, Now look here. If you don't go to bed at once, I shall come upstairs and slap you. Go to bed at once. So a few more minutes elapsed, and once again, the little voice, Mummy, Mummy, will you come upstairs to slap and bring us up a glass of water, will you? There was a young fellow who was a very, very nervous young fellow. And he was very much in love with a girl. But he was too nervous to propose to her in the ordinary way. So he suddenly had a brainwave and thought he had telephoned to her. So he telephoned her up and said, I say, I say, is that Miss Johnson? So she said, yes. Well, he said, I say, do you know I have a most important question to ask you? So she said, have you? He said, what is it? So he said, I say, I say, will you marry me? So she said, rather, I think I will. Who is it speaking? There's a young fellow who got married, and shortly after he was married, he invited a friend down to meet the new wife. And after dinner, the young wife was sitting in the corner doing a little bit of sewing. And the young husband went up to his friend and said, uh, I say, old boy, I say, old man. He said, what do you think of the wife? So his friend said, well, old chap, do you want a candid opinion? He said, of course I do. Of course I want a candid opinion. So his friend said, well, old chap. He said, her teeth. Her teeth. They are false teeth, aren't they? So the husband said, yes, old man, yes, yes, they are four teeth. Yes, she has four teeth. And the friend said, her eye. Her eye, the fourth eye, isn't it? So the husband said, yes, 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 as a matter of fact, she has a fourth eye. Yes, that is a fourth eye. Then the friend said, her hair, her hair. That's a wig, isn't it? So the husband said, yes, that's a wig, right enough. You can speak up, she's deaf as well. A man went up to the manager of an iron foundry and asked for a job. So the manager said, well, as a matter of fact, I do want a man, but he must be a strong man. He said, now, are you a strong man? 
Said very strong indeed, Governor. Said really a strong man, very powerful, Governor. Oh, he said, well, I'll try you for the day to see how you get on. Well, he turned out to be a very good man indeed, so he kept him on. And a day or so went by, and the man came up to the manager and said, excuse me asking you, Governor, but do you think you could find a job for my brother? Oh, he said, your brother's strong man? Very strong indeed, Governor. Said, really a strong man? Very powerful, Governor. Oh, he said, well, send him up and I'll see what I can do. Well, the brother turned out to be a very good man, so he kept him on. Well, a few more days went by and once more the man came up. He said, Governor, I do hope that you won't think that I'm rude or annoying you or anything like that. Think it'll find a job for my father? Oh, I said, I don't know about that. Your father's strong man? Very strong indeed, Governor. Really a strong man, very powerful, Governor. He says, yes, that's all very well. But your father must be an elderly man. He can't be as strong as you. He said, not as strong as me, Governor. Huh? Why, he's as strong as me and my brother put together. He said, right, you and your brother leave on Saturday and your father comes in on Monday. 